All right, folks, welcome back to Lawsonia Links. We are on the back nine here. If you didn't watch the front nine, make sure you check that out before this video. Playing around a hickory golf here with my buddies Tim and Brad. This is a practice round for the Wisconsin Hickory Open. Lasonia was designed in 1930 by William Langford and Theodore Moreau, and uh, they were masters of the steam shovel. Moved a lot of earth to make this golf course, and that resulted in some beautiful, dramatic green complexes throughout the golf course. All right, so here's what's in the bag, sponsored by Stuart and Jacoby, I'm using my primary hickory set for this round, which include two replica woods, five authentic irons, and my trusty Tom Stewart RTJ putter. And here's my Callaway Super Soft Ball that I'm using. And here on the back nine, we're doing a mix of green and white tees. Starts with number 10, it's a par three, 162 yards. Here's my hickory golfing buddy from Wisconsin, Brad, starting things off with a pretty good tee shot here. Got himself on the front of the green. I was having some trouble on the front nine and that carried over to the back. Just trying to hit the mashie too hard there. Ended up hitting it way too fat. So trying it again. Again, hit it pretty fat. At least uh, moved the ball up. Finally got some crisper contact, but ended up putting this over the back of the green. So not the way I wanted to start the back nine. Here I'm using the Croydon Spade Mashie to pop this up out of the rough. And that was a pretty good shot. Didn't have a ton of green to work with though, so ended up rolling it past the hole. And uh, I'm in a hurry to get off this hole. All right, moving on to number 11, par five, 430 yards. Back nine really opens up back here and you can see all the way across. Here's my other golfing buddy, Tim, using his modern clubs. And uh, he has a nice tee shot here to get some over the bunker and into the fairway. I think I was seeing a lot of distance here to cover and just overswung on this tee shot. Ended up pushing this way right onto the fairway of the 13th hole. And uh, at least I'm in the fairway. <laughs> so using the Tom Stewart Auto Hackbarth 2 iron to get myself back on the proper hole. That was a pretty good shot. And this is the Tad Moore Replica Mills Aluminum Play Club. Didn't hit this well on the front nine. This was my best shot with it of the round. Looks like it. <laughs> it put me in a position to use the Hagen Iron Man Sand Wedge. Just didn't get underneath that enough. Club's been pretty good to me so far though, so even though I hit a bad shot here and there, I'm sticking with it. And this was probably one of my better approaches with the Mashie of the round. Finally, one of those that worked. Still couldn't convert the putt though. All right, number 12, par three, 141 yards, well protected by bunkers, and some elevation on the right side there, not where you wanna be. Using the mashie to tee off and uh, ended up exactly where I didn't wanna be. At least it wasn't in the sand. Here's the Hagen Iron Man once again, and that's a better shot. Put me in a good spot. And I just thought this was really cool. The, everything about Lasonia is neat, and including the sand rakes. Those look vintage. Probably are vintage. I had a chance for par there. Couldn't convert the putt, though. And that's where I figure out oh, this is a practice round. They don't count. <laughs> All right, number 13, par 5, 489 yards. This is a signature hole on the back nine. Really cool elevation changes here. You can tell that Lankford and Moreau Put a lot of thought into this hole and moved a lot of earth to make it happen. I'm doing something really wrong every time. Yeah, for some reason I just could not get comfortable over the ball. These shots don't look terrible to me on video, but in my head it, it didn't feel like I knew how to swing the club at all. Uh, that's a bad spot to be. All right, so this shot here is where you have an opportunity to cover the ravine and try to get up on that ridge. I thought I might just lay up because I wasn't feeling confident with my swing and I ended up down in the bottom of the uh, the ravine here. But a cool bit of strategy going into this green if uh, you got the club to try to get it up there. And a couple guys in our uh, Hickory event did get it up there from that spot. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a big green up here so you've got some room to land your shot. And uh, I really enjoyed this hole. I'm looking forward to playing it again. 
And despite how I was feeling in my head, it wasn't a terrible finish. I think I bogeyed that. But um, yeah, the 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 headspace I was in going into the event, uh, the weekend event, it was a two-day tournament. Uh, just was not a very good one to be in. Yeah, let's talk about the event. The Wisconsin Hickory Open dates back to 2010, and uh, the Wisconsin Hickory golfers are fantastic hosts. If you have an opportunity to come up here and do any of their events, especially this one, I highly recommend it. Check out their website for more information and for the events they've got coming up. All right, back to the action number 14, the par 3, 130 yards. Nice little respite after that long trek on 13. But this is by no means an easy hole. Yeah. Kind of a modified version of the Boxcar yeah. 7, where you've got an elevated green to land on. Uh, but fortunately, there's more room around the green in case you miss the green. Uh, that, that's what's happening here. So chipping up still. You had an opportunity to get that in the hole there for par. Didn't happen. All right, number 15, par four, 370 yards. This hole plays a lot differently, um, modern versus hickory. So we played the white tees where this pond in front of the tee is in play in the practice round. But in the actual event, we were teeing off ahead of the pond, which makes this hole a lot easier. Tim here, though, shows how you do it. And that's a beautiful drive right down the middle. This is another one where I'm tempted to overswing because of all the distance I need to cover, but that one turned out okay. Just came up short of that bunker. Yeah, I see it. I was lucky that I wasn't in the sand very much during this practice round, but during the actual Wisconsin Hickory Open, I was in the sand a lot, and that didn't help my mental headspace either. Uh oh. Here, using the mashy, just offline a bit. Put that off the back of the green. I put my weight on my front foot using the, I believe that was the Hagen sand wedge. And uh, not quite what I was looking for, but it turned out all right. That putt just came up short. We all had similar putts here. Here's Brad with his homemade Tom Morris long nose putter. Watch the front nine for more looks at that beautiful putter that he made based on a template from Elmer Nahum's practical club making book. And finally, got myself a highlight. All right, number 16, par four. It's a short par four, 293 yards. Just had a case of the rights here on the back nine. And this one went a little too far right. Actually went out of bounds, so I had to take a drop up there. This rough was kind of thick, but not as thick as the fescue, which I found plenty of. You saw that on the front nine on number nine. Uh, over the weekend, I was in that quite a bit. That's a pretty good shot, though, too. And that's all to say, um, nothing really went right for me during the actual tournament. I think you're and, sure. uh, I basically decided that um, I needed to find a swing that I could count on. Um, and, you know, specifically, just a swing that if it started to break down in the course of a round, I could kind of deconstruct and say, all right, this part's not working, but let me go back to this first part of the swing that I know I can work with. And I just didn't have that with the swing I was using up to this event. If you've watched the course vlogs, you've seen, you know, a swing that I've basically pieced together with bubble gum and toothpicks. I mean, it's not really anything uh, professionally trained or, or anything like that. And, uh, I think I realized during this event um, that I needed some lessons. So uh, I'm looking forward to showing you that progression after this round and future course vlogs, uh, the progression of my new swing. Um, but this was kind of the, uh, the point where I realized I needed to do something different. All right, number 17, par four, 355 yards. Uh, got a tight fairway here that's choked by some bunkers. This is probably my best tee shot of the back nine, even though I pulled it left and ended up finding a bunker. It's using the Croydon Spade Masher here to just blast this out. I enjoy those kinds of sand shots. For some reason, they're just easier to get my head around. Just drive the club behind the ball. So that worked. And then I uh, put me in spot here. 
decent lie using the mashie. I got real good contact off that and actually drew that ball pretty well. Um, just bounced it off the back of the green though. And here I'm using the spade mashie to actually use, do a flop shot. Um, kind of surprised myself that this was possible, but uh, I put a good swing on it and did exactly what I was hoping to do. Here's a nice approach from Tim. Haven't shown too much of Tim's shots. I just wasn't in a good position with the camera because I was all over the place um, and, and Tim was plotting his way up the course efficiently. Here's Brad once again with the Tom Morris long nose, draining another putt. All right, so now we're heading home. Number 18, par five, 475 yards. This hole set up real nice to my eye. Um, even though I didn't hit the ball as well as I wanted to, I, I felt comfortable on it, which goes a long way for me. This tee shot was a little unlucky, as you'll see in a moment. Brad had the right line here. Yeah, you've come around with that club too over the course of the round. Yeah, right, exactly. The yeah, my ball took a bad bounce into this bunker, but I had a decent lie and was real happy with the contact that I got there using the mashie. So I advanced the ball pretty far there. And here's Brad on the left side of the fairway. Real nice approach there. He was planning on laying yeah, up. Yeah, you do. Great shot. And then here I'm using the mashie on my approach. And again, like I said, this hole just met my eye really well. And I was very comfortable on it. I was real happy with that result. And it put me in a position to get a par to close things out. And I just missed it. But not a bad way to finish. So that'll wrap things up here from Lasonia Lynx. Hope you enjoyed the round. I really enjoyed putting it together for you. Be back with another video next week. In the meantime, make sure you check out these two for my archive, including this, uh, the back nine of Spring Valley Country Club, which is the other Langford and Moreau course I played this year. And then we got Workshop Wednesday live stream number one uh, in the lower right. As always, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.